Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com. Welcome back to another video on the Cheesy Fan. Today we're trying a lot of interconnections between all the coils to try to bring the self-resonant frequency way, way down. Now, there's a lot of interesting things happening, happening here. I don't claim to fully understand all of them. I can only throw my thoughts and ideas at you and let you kind of tell me what your thoughts and ideas are. But basically, we're creating a lot of impedance through high difference in potential of wires next to each other. So we're interconnecting things in such a way where we have a much greater difference in potential across the wires and across the um, coil to coil. Um, lots of different things going on. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to show you the impedance analyzer, which does not read at these low frequencies, just so you can see that. And then I'll basically we'll be doing, doing everything else from the oscilloscope. So let's get started. So we've redone the interconnections uh, a few times now, uh, probably six or seven different times. Uh, along this whole entire path, I've basically been taking lots and lots of different measurements, trying to figure out exactly what we got going on here. So you can see some of the measurements from the past experiments here when I'm connecting them in different ways. Here I did uh, 1 to 12, and then 1B to 12B, and then 2 to 13, then 2B to 13B. And basically I interconnected these, then I interconnected these, and then I series those two. As you can kind of see, uh, I've got some of this drawn. Uh, actually, that's a different one, so I didn't quite draw it on here like that. You can see all the measurements are relatively similar, almost uh, too similar. It's kind of uh, kind of interesting how similar they are. So yeah, most of this is pretty similar. And here is the uh, latest measurements, and these measurements are based upon this configuration here. So let me show you uh, on a piece of paper kind of what I got going on here. Um, this section right here is basically how they're connected. And then this is just the pattern, then they get reconnected uh, across all these connections I didn't draw on here. And so basically we're going from coil 1 to coil 26 to coil 12 to coil 38 to coil 25, actually it's 24 to 49, I drew that wrong, and then back up to coil 1B, and then 26B, 12B, 38B, 25, well it's actually 24B, 49B, and then back to 2A, and so forth and so on. Um, this configuration is the next configuration I'd like to do. And then here's one of another configuration, and it just goes on. There's a bazillion different ways to do this. But what I'm doing is I'm slowly working up the maximum difference in potential between winding and winding. You can see here we actually get about the greatest. We can go one more. So I just want to show you what's going on here. And now we're going to go ahead and look at the uh, oscilloscope and see exactly what's going on. Basically, I'm doing another ring test, very simple ring test, so we can see the resonant frequency. Um, like I said, the impedance analyzer isn't reading at these low frequencies. You could uh, put a different crystal oscillator on the outside and make it run at different frequencies, but I don't, I'm not going to mess with that. We can do it with the ring test for now. All right, so here you can see the impedance analyzer and what that actually is doing for us. We cannot see much going on. It's uh, pretty, pretty well in the very, very low frequency range. The impedance uh, here, the phase angle looks quite interesting, actually. It doesn't really go down past 20 and it kind of levels off. It almost goes to zero the whole time. That's actually a very interesting uh, result here. And I'm not 100% sure what that means but it's actually quite interesting because a lot of the times it was pretty pronounced and went down pretty far and pretty well stayed there when it was in capacitance and it was up pretty high when it was in inductance mode. So this obviously doesn't do justice for us. So now we're going to move on to the oscilloscope and this way we can get a little bit more data. So let me set that up. All right, so now we're going to do the ring test. We've got our 9 volt battery. We've got it acro across the coil here. And uh, yeah, we're basically just going to ring this and see how she goes. So there's our ring. Um, it looks fairly decent. 
Let's go ahead and measure the amplitude real quick. So we've got about uh, 62 volts at that peak and our negative peak is 47 so we're over a hundred volt peak to peak ring with a, a battery that's uh, this one's probably around six to seven volts they're pretty dead batteries so our frequency now is going to be roughly 370 Hertz 369.2 according to this we could zoom in here and get a uh, even better more accurate measurement if we want to but roughly 370 Hertz so it's rather interesting that now our resonant frequency is so low but one thing we notice here is that the uh, ring time right the dampening it dampens super fast so this dampens way faster than what we've seen on uh, a lot of other tests however it's also a lower frequency so again that is configured uh, in this fashion right here now we're gonna go ahead and either do this one or just jump straight to this one or I might even ride a new one we'll figure that out in the next part of this video which will be another day it takes quite a bit of time to rewire this as you can see and I had to make some more jumpers that were extra long to reach from one end of the board to the other and so uh, yeah we'll be doing that another day I believe I can get this really 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 low um, according to my ripped paper calculation right here um, so at 100 Hertz I need to be able to run this motor at a thousand RPM in order to reach the resonant frequency of the rotor versus the frequency so if we got it all the way down to three uh, 330 or 330.3 Hertz we only need about 2000 RPM so I believe I can reach the 50 Hertz range possibly even much lower but like I said I'm not 100% sure if we're really doing what we want to do because our capacitance and inductance measurements are really very similar when we configure this in all different ways but it's all frequency based when measuring like this so the goal here of course is to create the frequency range that in the rotational range so the self resonant frequency to be in the rotational range but that also causes a lot of other problems which I'm not going to get into right now and we'll discover those and talk about those more as we continue down this path so we'll see you uh, in the next part of this video when I got this reconfigured another day